And what I realized with the club is what makes them so mad is when you don't want to be a part of their club. What they usually do is go talk to people that's in, you know, my circle yep. and try to get them to try to convince them that they need to convince me. The internet has been buzzing with rumors claiming that Diddy and Jay-Z have been collaborating closely on some potentially controversial endeavors. Adding fuel to the fire, reports have surfaced suggesting that Ice Cube has also spoken out, alleging that Diddy, Jay-Z, and R. Kelly have been involved in some deeply concerning projects. I'm talking about the club of gatekeepers that we all got to deal with. You know who they are. There are claims suggesting that Hollywood operates like a sinister organization that allegedly involves people like Jay-Z and Diddy stopping at nothing to generate profits. Allegedly, this malevolent force has discovered a disturbing method of financial gain involving the demeaning of countless young individuals, mainly female artists. Apparently, Ice Cube is not one to shy away from speaking. I think you feel better about yourself when you say what needs to be said at the time it needs to be said and not afterwards where you go home and think, I should have said this. He allegedly contends that numerous female artists have experienced significant hardships at the hands of Jay-Z and Diddy, often without receiving any recognition. Their lives, he reportedly claims, have been reduced to a tumultuous and challenging journey. Hidden, hidden agendas. They owe a lot of people a lot of favors. The more money you give them, the more you, you're listened to. As further proof of this claim, Ice Cube has once highlighted that Hollywood has a history of exploiting everyone, including prisoners. And it's not just Ice Cube. There's been a perception that Hollywood collaborates closely with the private influential industry, leading to mutual benefits derived from the free labor of millions of inmates. The concern extends to the vulnerability of even young children, innocent teenagers, and particularly female artists who may not be immune to the exploitative practices within the entertainment industry. Judges were into a prison camp. Where were the protectors of the kids at that time? Ice Cube has persistently leveled alarming accusations, asserting that Hollywood operates like a profiting from subjecting individuals to various challenges. Strangely enough, there seems to be sufficient evidence supporting this unsettling notion. Whether it's Hollywood CEOs or record label owners, those wielding power in the industry purportedly have an interest in increasing the prison population. The underlying motive, according to these claims, is as simple and sinister as one might anticipate. And they definitely know who they are. Um, a lot of people would be like, what, who, who, who? Come on, man, stop playing. Ice Cube appeared on Bill Maher's Club Random Podcast and made some bone-chilling revelations. He says Hollywood executives want people to be locked up, and they help create a whole culture of violence and thug life to make this possible. This isn't just mindless speculation. Anyone can easily see the truth when you look at where the money goes. He spoke very clearly about the connection between Hollywood and the influential industry. Who benefits and profits off our bickering and division? I don't know their names, but if you follow the money, you go high enough, you start to see, literally the same people who own the record labels own the prisons. The music industry also benefits from landing naive young people into prisons, and the higher-ups use music to push these people into the lifestyle of crime. Ice Cube spoke about this and said, it seems really kind of suspicious, if you want to say that word, that the records that come out are really geared to push people towards that prison industry. According to the rapper, the whole industry is involved in creating an environment that makes young people more prone to crime and a very sinister and elaborate social engineering is at work here in order to make profit off of people's lives. You know, some social engineering going on here to, to make sure those prisons stay full. According to Ice Cube and Bill Maher's discussion on the podcast, record label owners allegedly contribute to the glamorization of and in their music, intentionally portraying these lifestyles as cool. The implication is that this strategy influences young people to idealize a path of violence and crime. As a result, more and more youth may find themselves entangled in the criminal justice system, depriving them of a genuine opportunity to build a decent life for themselves. Is that the kind of stuff in rap lyrics works as a funnel to get people uh, inspired to do the kind of things that would get them in prison. 
Allegations have surfaced, suggesting that individuals associated with the case have a significant interest in the occult and may have been involved in human sacrifices in the past. Recent revelations have shed light on various aspects of the case, hinting at possible foul play. What sets this moment apart is the explicitness with which these accusations are being made. A growing number of supporters are now calling for the investigation to be reopened, demonstrating steadfast dedication to ensuring that Aliyah receives the justice she deserves. No name, I won't name. It's up. No, you. You know what I'm saying? And just for Minister Farrakhan, I love you, but the way you read that, I took that as a slight. You know what I'm saying? People like Kanye West have also boldly stated that not only his mother, but numerous others have purportedly become victims of a mysterious and cruel organization engaged in disturbing human sacrifices. Despite the seriousness of these allegations, there appears to be a reluctance among many to directly confront or challenge this enigmatic force. Kanye, renowned for his outspoken nature, fearlessly continues to articulate his views, whether they involve controversial ideas or what he perceives as concealed truths. His unwavering determination to share his opinions has once again thrust these controversial claims into the spotlight, igniting intense debates and concerns. People are looking over. You know, the, the media has run all these stories smearing me for saying, hey, I can't be anti-Semitic if I'm a Semite. The recent statements have left many puzzled, but for those willing to delve deeper, a perplexing narrative begins to unfold. Celebrities, without explicitly stating it, have dropped hints that numerous figures in the entertainment industry might be ensnared in a sinister web involving human sacrifices. Kanye West, in particular, claims to remain uncontrolled by Hollywood power players because he hasn't been involved in such activities. Yet, his cryptic references to a list of individuals possibly under someone's influence raise thought-provoking questions. Questions. Kanye seems to be alluding to the secretive Illuminati organization, suggesting that some of its members may be connected to dark deeds. In this enigmatic puzzle of words, Kanye leaves us to ponder the shadows lurking behind the glamour of the entertainment industry. They can't control me. They can control Shaq and Charles Barkley. They can control LeBron James. They can control Beyonce and Jay-Z. Ain't no name I won't say. It's up! Jaguar Wright's perspective on Aaliyah's tragic passing adds a compelling layer to the ongoing discourse. According to her, at the time of Aaliyah's untimely death, Beyonce's solo career was encountering challenges, and she needed a breakthrough moment to propel her to superstardom, in which apparently Jay-Z helped her. Aaliyah's unfortunate demise seemingly provided that crucial boost, ultimately establishing Beyonce as the queen of many hearts. As Aaliyah's memory fades, questions arise about how long the same individuals will benefit from recurring tragedies. Some argue that accountability for any potential wrongdoing is long overdue. Even fans are commending Jaguar for her outspoken stance in defense of their beloved songstress, suggesting that it's time for justice to prevail in the name of Aliyah. One fan wrote, I'm afraid for this women she has to know that they will try to stop her for putting this truthful information out. People are already seeing the truth behind the music industry, but she's confirming Shah, much respect for this brave women. Well, Aliyah's case is just very complicated and it also involves R. Kelly. There are claims circulating that in R. Kelly's trial, some of his alleged victims were coerced into giving false testimony, suggesting that the court might not be treating him fairly. An audio leak has emerged purportedly featuring an alleged federal informant stating that they managed to turn one of R. Kelly's witnesses. Sharon Winbush, a former employee of R. Kelly, asserts that she sent the provided audio. According to her, the person heard in the clip is a federal informant who allegedly pressured a witness to fabricate details about her true relationship with R. Kelly. Winbush claims that this was orchestrated as part of a complex plan to undermine R. Kelly's defense. She made The singer was seeking the appeals court to either overturn his conviction or grant him a new trial. It's worth noting that, in a separate trial in Chicago, Kelly had previously been sentenced to 20 years in prison in February after being found guilty of CP and enticing a minor, as reported by TMZ. During the Chicago trial, Kelly's attorney expressed similar concerns, stating that the government's burden cannot be met with the inference of bad character or tendency to commit crimes. You may consider him to be the most immoral, 
dishonest person on the planet, and that has nothing to do with whether the government has met its burden. At that time, a judge ordered Kelly to serve 19 of the 20 years concurrently with his other sentence. Yet another legal representative for R. Kelly petitioned the judge overseeing his ST case to vacate his conviction and initiate a new trial. The basis for this request is the argument that his trial attorneys displayed incompetence and that the singer was unjustly depicted as a CL deviant to the jury. Because defendant was forced to defend against dozens of uncharged claims of A and S misbehavior, much of it lawful albeit unpalatable for some, defendant was stripped of the presumption of innocence and denied a fair trial. Attorney Jennifer Bonjine wrote in a legal memorandum filed to court. However, there are some speculations that Jay might have been involved with R. Kelly in the minor case. According to reports, Jay-Z was the one who got the whole documentary surviving R. Kelly up and running. Jay-Z may have provided the funds for Dream Hampton to make the documentary about Kelly's accusations. Looks like Jay-Z really wanted Kelly's career to be over. If you don't believe Ronnie's word on Jay-Z's role in the case, maybe this will do the trick. This case wasn't the first time that Jay-Z had helped Dream financially. In fact, the rapper wired tens of thousands of dollars in minutes. After she asked him to help with expenses, protesters incurred while demonstrating against police brutality. If Jay-Z was ready to give tens of thousands of dollars to her, it's not shocking that he also decided to fund the documentary she was making. Jay is so open-hearted with Hampton because the two happened to have a long history. You know, Dream Hampton was his ex-girlfriend. Dream Hampton wrote his the decoded you know, he, mm. he, he funded her protests in Ferguson. The narrative suggests that Jay-Z seized an opportunity by financing Dream's documentary, which not only gave her career a significant boost, but also contributed to the downfall of R. Kelly. But the text implies that Jay-Z had a substantial list of motivations. Chief among them was a lawsuit that not only left Jay-Z's reputation tarnished, but also resulted in a financial setback of $70 million. Yeah, it, it was a little deeper than the best of both worlds situation. You know, R. Kelly sued him for like, like 70 million dollars after that. R. Kelly had ruined Jay-Z's tour, ended up winning the lawsuit and costing him millions of dollars as well. But that wasn't all. Jay-Z knew if Kelly managed to get out of this trial unharmed, he would speak up sooner or later. After all, Jay-Z has some skeletons in his own closet too. Singer Aaliyah's boyfriend at the time of her death, Damon Dash, revealed how Jay-Z was after Aaliyah himself, that too when she was a minor. I did not know Jay was trying to holler at her, but then it just happened like that. He was trying, I was trying, everybody was trying, he was going hard. Damon even said that Aaliyah had dumped Jay-Z or maybe even kept him in the friend zone. No wonder Jay-Z always disliked Kelly the way he did. After all, Kelly managed to get married to the girl Jay-Z liked too. The music executive went on to disclose that Jay-Z had become noticeably resentful once he discovered that Damon was pursuing Aaliyah. Damon explained that he had some feelings about it, but it was common knowledge. People tried to act like he was really involved with her. Although he was sending gifts and making romantic gestures, he was courting her, so they were both putting in a lot of effort effort, and coincidentally found themselves in the same house on the 4th of July. So we were both going hard, and we, right. and we ended up in the same house 4th, 4th of July, so we were, for some reason this, this day... Wait a minute, you, Jay, and Aaliyah ended up in the same house? Yeah. It was a situation where Aaliyah's attention might sway toward him one moment, and then toward me the next. Damon emphasized his consistency in his pursuit of the singer, saying, But that particular week, I was on top of my game. Everything I said was witty, you know what I mean? He recollected a specific incident saying, I remember coming downstairs and Jay-Z had this sigh. His friends were teasing him and making jokes. However, it seems like Jay-Z won the game and he has reportedly also dated Aaliyah. Aaliyah wasn't the only girl Jay-Z had been involved with. There are rumors that he had a relationship with Foxy Brown too when she was a minor. Wendy Williams talked revealed this information and said, Jay-Z and Foxy Brown were allegedly a romantical thing. All right, I'll say alleged. But we know, we know. Yeah, she hit it before Beyonce. Allegedly. Mmm, Jay-Z has seen how the world will stand up to destroy you over such sort of accusations, thanks to the Kelly trial, and he certainly does doesn't want that for himself. That's why he funded the documentary and did that at such a strategic time that the jurors could watch it and form their opinions on the matter beforehand. People are pointing out how Jay-Z's decision to bring down Kelly is weird, considering how he himself has committed the same crimes. One person pointed out, Beyonce was 19 when they started dating, and Jay-Z never dated Aaliyah. They were friends when she was around 21. She dated Jay-Z's friend Dame Dash. Foxy was 18 when the song with Jay-Z came out, and she has said many times this bull asterisk 
risk, it rumor is not true. Another one added, leave R. Kelly alone and let justice prevail at his appeal. The truth always comes out in the end. Some are so quick to be judge him before the truth is being revealed. Leave him alone and Ronnie find someone else to lie on. One more person wrote, say what? Those rappers really should just stop. Jay-Z is always insecure and sending he did the same thing to Sean Paul Reggae artist and Sean didn't want Beyonce. Yes! Well, according to Ice Cube, Jay is not working alone to carry on such crimes. He had mogul like Diddy on his side who himself has been part of many alleged crimes. Diddy's involvement, particularly through his head of security, underscores his role in the situation, heightening public concerns. There is now an increased sense of worry regarding Cassie, with people mindful of the unfortunate events involving Kim Porter during her marriage to Diddy. Speculation is circulating that Cassie may be in jeopardy after speaking out against the influential mogul in the industry. Concerned individuals are drawing parallels between the current situation and past events involving Kim, raising fears that history could repeat itself for Cassie. The entertainment industry was profoundly shaken by the sudden death of Kim Porter, leaving loved ones and supporters grappling with disbelief over how a seemingly healthy young woman could succumb to pneumonia. Compounding the tragedy, a significant number of people questioned the accuracy of Kim Kim's diagnosis. Initially, Kim's death was shrouded in uncertainty, with the first coroner's report revealing the presence of toxins in her body and an undetermined cause of death. The mysterious disappearance of the initial coroner added to the intrigue, and a subsequent coroner later attributed the cause of death to lobar pneumonia. Notably, Jaguar Wright, often regarded as a forthright commentator in the entertainment industry, succinctly captured the sentiment surrounding Kim's death. Kim died from pneumonia, but there's the first coroner's report that said that she died it was ruled a homicide and they found toxins in her. She subtly hinted at the possibility of certain poisons inducing symptoms similar to pneumonia, implying a connection to Diddy in some capacity in the case. They have poisons that create heart attack and pneumonia-like symptoms. The most unsettling aspect of the case emerged when the initial coroner, who had made his findings public regarding Kim Porter's death, was discovered dead. Tuffy News TV first reported this distressing development. I've been told that he was the head of the snake into the investigation of the passing of Kim Porter. And not only that, y'all, he was the one who initially found something problematic. Tuffy didn't stop at revealing the coroner's demise. His industry informants provided additional information. According to Tuffy, he received an email from one of his followers detailing that Kim Porter purportedly attempted to reach her personal doctor, but faced difficulties in doing so. This alleged struggle led her to make a critical mistake, described as the most significant of her life. According to sources, after Kim Porter futilely waited for her doctor to respond, she confided in the father of her daughters, who then directed her to another doctor of his choosing. Unfortunately, despite these efforts, they were unable to save her. Surprisingly, it suggested that Kim had a premonition of the unfolding events. Allegedly, she sent a group text to her close friend saying, he got me. However, the phone was reportedly confiscated by the security team brought by Diddy when he arrived at Kim's house after her demise. There's another dimension to the suspicion surrounding Diddy's involvement in Kim Porter's death. Diddy, known for being a serial cheater, reportedly engaged in infidelity with Kim's best friend at the time, Sarah Chapman. The timing of Sarah's pregnancy coincided with Kim's causing profound emotional distress. This trauma visibly impacted Kim's health, and of course, Diddy just had to rub it in with the expensive gifts he got Sarah Chapman. People are now suggesting that Kim might have hid the things that are now revealed through Cassie. One of the internet users wrote, So disgusting and wicked! For a man that has daughters, I hope he is still going to be held accountable for all the women he a. Let him share a cell with R. Kelly. Another one added, He settled very quickly, but my question is this. How long does Cassie have? Diddy settled very quickly and is playing the humble card, but I call he is plotting, and it's a matter of time to see how this really ends. I hope Cassie is protected properly. One more person added, This settlement was announced exactly three days after the anniversary of Kim Porter's death. This was a humiliation ritual BC Diddy got out of line. Compounding his challenges, Diddy has encountered a recent setback in his personal life concerning his relationship with Young Miami. A close friend of Young Miami explained, With everything going on, Young Miami is choosing to step back for now. The future is uncertain, but for the time being, both of 
of them have decided that it's best to take a break. Young Miami forms one half of the popular rap duo, The City Girls, alongside JT, Jatavia Shakara Johnson. Hailing from Miami, Florida, the duo rose to prominence after an uncredited guest appearance on Drake's hit single, In My Feelings, in 2018. The City Girls signed with Quality Control Music in 2017 and made their debut with the mixtape Period in 2018, followed by their first studio album, Girl Code, in the same year. Their music has yielded platinum-certified U.S. Top 40 singles, including Twerk, featuring Cardi B and Act Up. The duo has continued their success with albums like City on Lock 2020 and Raw 2023. Diddy, the acclaimed recording artist and music producer, has woven a tapestry of high-profile relationships throughout his illustrious career. The rumors further got strong when Young Miami gave her stance on the case. While the City Girls rapper remained hush-hush online through the first 24 hours of allegations and the quickly reached settlement, instead, it seems like Miami was busy planning a Lil Friendsgiving ahead of the holidays. My best friend. Yes, I see that ah! <laughs> We had a Friendsgiving. I'm thankful for my baby gal. Carisha shared visuals from her gathering and showcased some of her guests. However, keen-eyed fans and critics quickly observed the absence of her usual plus one in the footage. While the full guest list remained unclear, the imagery revealed at least 12 chairs arranged at a long dining table. Saucy Santana and Ari Fletcher were spotted on the rapper's Instagram story. The venue provided a glimpse of a private room separated by tall drapes, adorned with a golden neon Friendsgiving sign. The table featured several bouquets of pink, red, and orange roses, along with scattered lit candles. Young Miami infused her Jamaican taste into the event, offering a catered menu that included island classics such as oxtail, curry goat and shrimp, rice and peas, mac and cheese, and cabbage. After the Shade Room shared clips of Karaisha's event, social media users flooded the comments section with over 11,000 remarks. Some remarked on misspellings in Young Miami's printed menu, while others focused on notable absences, particularly pointing out the non-attendance of Diddy and JT. However, some pointed out his questionable behavior with the girls of this industry. One of them wrote, He has some nerve talking about these women ruining his reputation. Like, bro, you ruined it all on your own with your selfish and evil ways. Another one added, About time somebody took a serious look at Sean Combs' bad, illegal, and morally disgusting behavior. Just because somebody has a pile of money does not excuse them from U.S. law. One more person went on writing, I've always said he has evil eyes, feels like a dark void in every picture and video of him, instead of a soul, just pure evil in there. I'm old enough to remember when Pac and Biggie were still blessing us in the flesh. Never trusted Puff or Diddy, depending on your age. His relationships with the other females of the industry were also not good. In the early 90s, he engaged in an on-and-off romantic involvement with fashion designer Misa Hilton Brim. This period coincided with her role in styling the music group Jodeci. The union resulted in the birth of their son, Justin Combs. Following this, Diddy entered into a relationship with Kim Porter in 1994, and their journey had its share of peaks and valleys until their separation in 2007. Together, they share three children, including the rapper known as King Combs. Diddy's romantic timeline also features a relationship with Jennifer Lopez, commencing in 1999 and lasting for two years before their eventual breakup in 2001. In 2003, Jennifer Lopez voiced concerns about Diddy's fidelity during an interview with Vibe magazine. This incredible stuff was happening in my career. At the same time, he was going through the trial. It was a lot of stuff to do. Diddy's romantic connections also extended to businesswoman Sarah Chapman, with whom he shares a daughter. Their relationship experienced periods of on and off dating. Additionally, Diddy was rumored to have had a fling with actress Cameron Diaz from 2008 to 2012, although she later married Benji Madden in 2015. And then his most recent lawsuit yet confirms the whole scenario. In a statement to The Times, Cassie revealed her readiness to break her silence after years in silence and darkness, expressing her determination to share her story and advocate for herself and other women who endure and a in their relationships. Contrastingly, a spokesperson for Combs, recognized by his multiple monikers such as Puff Daddy, P Diddy, Diddy and Love, vehemently refuted these accusations, denouncing them as offensive and outrageous. The representative further asserted that these allegations surfaced subsequent to Cassie's alleged demand of $30 million from the mogul. And Cassie, whose real name is Cassandra Ventura, they're saying tonight that the two have settled a lawsuit she filed against the mogul yesterday in Manhattan 
federal court. The lawsuit paints a disturbing picture of the relationship, revealing how Combs allegedly took control over every aspect of Cassie's life, both personally and professionally. The allegations detail years of horrific A, including brutal beatings, forced S encounters, and a constant looming threat of violence. Nice. She's claiming she was stuck in a decade-long cycle of abuse, violence, Baby. The legal document portrays Combs as prone to uncontrollable rage, alleging that he compelled Ventura to participate in S acts with male S workers, capturing these encounters through photography and filming. The suit suggests that she was administered D before and during these incidents, enabling her to disassociate during these horrific encounters. Moreover, the lawsuit contends that Ventura was a victim of ST, as she was allegedly forced to engage in S acts in multiple cities against her will. However, people People believe that Diddy's case is much more complicated because he was not only engaged with the women, but allegedly with the men also. Diddy likes to portray himself in the public as a dedicated father and family man, but his private activities show an entirely different picture of the music producer. Many incidents have been revealed where Diddy would purposefully go after young straight male rappers. He would force them into performing S acts on him, but reportedly according to Ice Cube, it all has been done with mutual understanding and benefits. The system is is, is just designed. That's it for today. See you in the next video. Until then, goodbye.